Well, hey there, kiddos. I hope that you are having a fantastic weekend. What we're going to do today is talk about something called factoring completely, um, which it's just it's still more factoring like we've done for the last couple of days, but there it adds some steps for things we need to look for first. And these steps I'm about to give you are going to be true and apply every time you factor from here on out. So the first thing you want to do when factoring completely is you want to look for a GCF. Look and see if the polynomial you want to factor contains a GCF, because if it does, then you want to factor it out. So step one, look for a GCF and then take it out if there is one. Step two, you want to look and see if the first term of your polynomial has a negative. And if it is negative, then you're going to have to factor that out. So does it have a negative? If so, factor it out. Because we can't do anything as long as our first term is negative. Then after we do that, we're going to factor the polynomial using one of the methods that we have already learned, either box method or group method. So you factor the remaining polynomial using a method that we already know. And so now let's talk about this first problem that we have on here. I have 8x squared minus 24x plus 18. Step 1 tells me look for a GCF. So I've got those three numbers, and I, they definitely have a GCF because 2 will go into 8, 24, and 18. But that's all they have in common because they don't all three have an x. So step 1, I'm going to factor out a 2. And when I factor out that 2, what is remaining is 4x squared, because 2 times 4x squared makes 8x squared, minus 12x plus 9. So this is the remaining polynomial I'm going to factor, and I'm going to do it using the box method, because that is something y'all all seem to be the most comfortable with. But then I'm going to do some grouping methods here in just a minute so you can sort of see both and have a little more practice. So the two we're going to leave alone for now because it was just the GCF we took out. I'm going to factor this remaining polynomial. And so to start with the box method, I put the first term in the top left box and the last term in the bottom right box. And so now we've got to figure out what goes here. So this is where I do my x. I multiply my first term and my last term. So that makes 36x squared. My middle term is negative 12x. So I need two numbers here that will multiply to make positive 36 but add to make negative 12. Since when I multiply, they are a positive, but when I add, they are a negative, that tells me that my two numbers are going to be negative. Because when you multiply two negatives, you get a positive, but when you add two negatives, you get a negative. So let's just start with our factors. I've got negative 1 and negative 36. Well, those do not add up and make negative 12. Um, I have negative 2 and negative 18. Those also don't make negative 12. Um, I've got negative 6 and negative 6. Oh look, those make negative 12. So my two numbers are negative 6x and negative 6x. So I'm going to plug them into these boxes here. Now I'm going to go through and do my GCF. So my GCF for this top row right here is going to be 2x. And for this bottom row, it's going to be negative 3. And the reason it's negative is because this first number in this first box is negative. So I'm going to pull a negative out. Well, for this first column right here, it's going to be 2x. And for this last column over here, it's going to be negative 3 again. So my factors are 2x minus 3 and 2x minus 3. And don't forget the GCF of 2 that we factored out at the beginning. So my factors are 2x minus 3 and 2x minus 3. And then my 2 is my GCF. I've got it included. Now, if you want to get all fancy, you can write this as 2x minus 3 squared, but you can't forget the 2 of the GCF that you pulled out earlier. So that is now factored completely. You have factored all the way. You've done everything you can. That, what Everything that's left can no longer be factored any further, so you're done. So now look at number 2. Number 2 asks you to factor completely. So step 1, is there a GCF? Well, there absolutely is because 3 will go into 48 and into 27, so I'm going to factor out a 3. And when I do that, what's left is 16, because 3 times 16 is 48, minus 9x squared. Now, I'm going to teach you something really quick that's going to come up again next week, but I want you to see it because it makes this easier to factor. And it's really easy to learn. What is remaining? This polynomial that is remaining now that I've pulled out the GCF is called a difference of two squares because it's a subtraction problem, hence the word difference. And what's being subtracted are two perfect squares. 
16 is a perfect square because 4 times 4 makes 16. 9x squared is also a perfect square because 3x times 3x makes 9x squared. So these are both perfect squares and they're being subtracted. To factor a difference of two squares, it's super duper easy. Like I said, the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 9x squared is 3x. As long as you can figure out those two things, the factors are easy. A factors of a difference of two squares, one of them always has a plus sign and the other one always has a minus. That's how you end up with nothing in the middle here. It's how you end up so there's only two terms instead of three like this one has. You wouldn't end up with a binomial if these had the same sign. But since they're opposites, it makes it a binomial when you multiply. And now, so when I factor, square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 9x squared is 3x. And so those are your two factors. Don't forget the GCF we pulled out at the first. And so that is now factored. I didn't have to do box method. I didn't have to group. I didn't have to do anything special. That's now factored. Difference of two squares is my favorite. If you can learn to recognize that, it's going to make life easy for you. And we'll see it again, like I said. And I'm going to do another problem in a minute. So number three here I'm going to do using the grouping method. And it's kind of squished up. So I'm going to try and write as small as I can. Um, I'm probably going to run my work over into this problem, but I'll erase what I need to when we get there. So I'm going to change colors so stuff doesn't mix up too much. I'm going to factor this, 6x squared plus 39xy plus 60y, and like I said, the first thing I have to do is see, is there a GCF? Well, I got 6, 39, and 60, and last time I checked, 3 went into all three of those numbers, so I'm going to factor out a 3. And if I look, all three of these terms also have a y, so I'm going to also factor out a y. So my GCF is going to be 3y. So what's remaining becomes 2x squared, it's 3 times 2 is 6, there's my x squared, plus 13, because 3 times 13 makes 39, and then my x, because here's the y already, plus, and then 3 times 20 is going to make my 60. So here's my remaining polynomial, and I'm going to factor that using the grouping method. So I'm going to do my x and my t, and I'm going to do them over here so I have some room, and like I said, I'll erase when I'm done. So step one, I'm going to multiply those two together so that becomes 40x squared. And then this right here is going to be 13x. So my trick here is to find two numbers that multiply to make 40, that add to make 13. So let's just start with the most obvious, 1 times 40. Nope, those don't work. 2 times 20, that doesn't work either. Um, 4 times 10, that's only 14, not 13. Uh, 5 times 8. Oh, look, there it is, because 5 plus 8 makes 13. So I have 5x and 8x. So I'm going to take this and rewrite it. We'll come back to the 3y in a minute. But I'm going to rewrite this so that my 13x becomes 5x plus 8x because those are the same thing. So I have 2x squared plus 5x plus 8x. And if you'll see, those make that plus 20. Now I group. First two, next two. Now this first group, 2x squared and 5x, the greatest common factor for that group is going to be an x because they have an x in common. And when I factor out the x from this 2x squared, I still have the 2 and I have one of the x's left so that when I am done and I multiply this x and that x together, I get both of them. So I have the x squared. Then for my 5x, what's left, well, I took out the x, so I still have a 5. So now the next set of parentheses, this 8x and this 20. Well, the greatest common factor of 8x and 20 is going to be a 4. So I'm going to factor out that 4. And when I factor a 4 out of 8x, that leaves me with a 2x because 4 times 2x is 8x. And then 4 times 5 makes my 20. So these two parentheses are the same. So one of my factors is 2x plus 5. And the other factor is x plus 4. And you cannot forget that at some point I pulled out this 3y as part of the GCF. And so these are my factors for that problem, and that's how I did it using the grouping method. So make sure you write that answer down. I'm going to give you just a second, and then I'm going to erase because I've written all over the place and don't have room. And I need to be able to solve this problem. So make sure you have that solution because it's going bye-bye. And let's do this next problem. Step one, is there a GCF? 200x to the third and 32x.
Well, the greatest common factor for those two numbers is going to be an 8. 8 will go into both of those. And they both have x's. And they have one x in common because that's the lowest exponent. And so when I factor out that 8, 8 times 25 makes 200. And I've taken out one of the x's. And so to get my 3 total, I need x squared here. And then 8 times 4 makes 32, and I've already taken out the x, so there's what's left. And here's what I want you to see. What is remaining is a difference of two perfect squares. Because it's subtracted, that's a perfect square, that's a perfect square. So I'm going to factor it like I did the one ahead of it. I know I'm going to have two factors. One is plus, one is minus. The square root of 25x squared, well, 5 times 5 makes 25, and x times x makes x squared. So the square root of that is 5x. And the square root of 4 is 2. So there's my factors for the remaining polynomial. And then I just bring down my 8x with that. That is completely factored. So let's do one more. Let's finish off this word problem. And we'll call it a, a weekend. So an antique Persian carpet has an area of x squared plus x minus 20 and a length of x plus 5. The rug is displayed on a wall. And the wall has a width of x plus 2 feet and an area of x squared plus 17 plus x, sorry, x plus 30 feet. Write expressions for the length and width of both the rug and wall, then find the dimensions of the rug and wall if x is 20 feet. Ha, huh, there's a lot. So let's just do the rug. Okay? They're telling us that the rug is x squared plus x minus 20 feet, and they want us to factor it. Well, they've given us one of the factors. This length is one of the factors. They want us to find the other one. Okay? So they're just saying, factor this. Well, does this have a GCF? x squared, x, and 20. No, they have nothing in common. First term is not negative, so I'm just going to factor just like I have learned how. And so this one is really pretty simple because you don't have a leading coefficient. You have no number in front of the x squared. But, so we're going to start. Okay, first term times last term, that becomes negative 20 x squared. And then my middle number is an x. And so I need two numbers that multiply to make negative 20 that add up to positive 1. Well, I'm going to start with the obvious, negative 1 and 20. Well, that's not going to work. Um, negative 2 and 10. That doesn't work either. Um, negative 4 and 5. Negative 4 plus 5 makes 1. So I have negative 4x and 5x. So I'm going to group again because I want you to see it. So I'm going to write down x squared. And then this plus x is going to become minus 4x plus 5x, because if I combine those, it makes that, and then minus 20. So I'm going to group, group. Well, the greatest common factor for x squared and 4x is just an x. And if I take out one of the x's, I have 1 left here and a 4 left here. And then the GCF for 5x and 20 is going to be a 5. And if I take out that 5, I have an x here. And 5 times 4 makes 20. So my factors are x minus 4 and x plus 5. Well, the x plus 5 is already here. So the other part of my rug is x minus 4 feet. So there's my other dimension. So now let's do the wall. I'm going to erase my little x here. This, so I have room to do the wall. And so now let's do the wall. They tell me the area is x squared plus 17x plus 30. I also know one of the dimensions is x plus 2. So one of my factors better come out to be x plus 2. So we're going to factor x squared times 30 becomes 30x squared. And I need them to add up to make 17x. And so I make my t. So for 30, 1 in 30 makes 31 when I add. Nope. Um, 2 in 15, 2 plus 15 makes 17. So I have 2x. And 15x, so there's my two numbers. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 2x plus 15x, because those add up to make that, plus 30. Group. Greatest common factor for this first group is just an x. And when I take out one of the x's, I have an x left plus a 2. Greatest common factor here is going to be a 15. When I take out the 15, I have an x plus 15 times 2 makes 30. So my factors are x plus 2, yep, there it is, and x plus 15. So the other part of this, my wall, is x plus 15 right here. So there's my two factors. 
So now I found them. Now they want expressions for the length and width if I know that x is, sorry I went down too far, 20. Well, so for the rug, the x plus 5 becomes 20 plus 5, which is 25 feet. So one dimension is 25. The other one is x minus 4, and when I do 20 minus 4, that's going to be 16 feet. So there's my rug dimensions. Now my wall, x plus 2, well, I'm going to have to do 20 plus 2, which is 22 feet. And the other dimension, the x plus 15, I should say plus, is 20 plus 15, and that is going to be 35 feet. So my dimensions when x is 20 are for the rug 25 by 16 and for the wall 22 by 35 so that this all fits on the wall in a nice pretty little display. So that is um, factoring completely. We'll practice this on Monday and I will see you guys then.